Hello Dave is brought to you ad-free by my supporters on Patreon. Become a Patreon yourself and get your name listed as a supporter at the end of every video by following the link in the video description. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hello Dave with Down to Earth Astronomy. And yet again, it is Monday and what an exciting Monday. Because of course, tomorrow we are going to have the launch of the 3.2, or also referred to as the Q3 update for Elite Dangerous. Now, I've already done a... Um, walk through of the different um, things or features that are going to be added into the game, new ships, new weapons. Um, and I also had a live stream together with Exesius, Obsidian Ant and Yamix uh, on Friday, um, where we went over all the things, what we think about it. So I recommend you go and you can you can watch those two if you want more details on what's actually gonna, uh, gonna be implemented. Um, but one thing I did want to touch on today in, uh, in Hello Dave was the rather large amount of negativity that's been uh, around the patch from the community. If you go to that um, date release, uh, date announcement trailer or teaser or whatever you want to call it, it's pretty much just uh, negative comment after negative comment. It's it's pretty brutal to be honest. And I think that reflects a large part of the community that is a little disappointed with the two, uh, with this pre previous and this um, update that they're supposed to be content updates, but many people don't really feel like there is any content for them, especially because both content has been very much focused around the Thargoid narrative and combat. And for people who don't really care about combat or don't really care about the Thargoids at all, um, which I believe still is the majority, for those people there's very little to do in this patch. I mean, you can go look at the Guardian stuff, but again, if you're not interested in Thargoids, there's a good chance you're not interested in the Guardians either. Um, so you get a little bit of new weapons, a few new weapons, and you get uh, two new ships, and that's about it. And I can see why people would be disappointed about that. Well, let's say two new ships. We assume there's going to be two new ships. One has been announced. The Crate Phantom is still pure speculations, I think. Um, so I can see why people are is a little um, is a little negative, and. There's a lot of people when, when you go out and you, you see where people are, are coming, they say, oh, they're really, really counting hard on the Q4 update, which is, the, of course, the 3.3 update, which is going to come later this year. And that's the patch that's going to include both the mining updates, the exploration update with the new probes, um, new lighting system, squadrons, uh, fleet carriers, all that stuff. That's the big one. Lots and lots of very interesting, that looks very promising, all the stuff they're going to add in that patch. Um, but again, I can see why people are a little, little disappointed, and especially now when No Man's Sky just launched this, launched this No Man's Sky next update. Um, I think a lot of the more casual players are beginning to leak away from, from Elite. It's not the end of the world. Um, I would probably expect that a lot of people would think, oh, well... Um, Elite is not that interesting right now, I'm gonna go and play some No Man's Sky next, which has got a huge update. And then hopefully they're gonna come back later. And yeah, at least let's see um, let, let, let's see what, what happens. And I can definitely understand the disappointment. I have a little... Uh, I, I feel it as well. I, I've definitely been, um, been hoping that the two, uh, what they call content update, would have a little bit more content. Um, Maybe some quality of life stuff as well could have been really nice if they used the uh, the time to to do something like that. Like, I would have been extremely happy if they did a quality of life bug fixes update that had no new content at all. That it was just pure like work on the interesting issues, um, address some of the other like redo some of the UIs that are really due for an update. Uh, stuff like that would really uh, have been nice if they. Uh, if, if they would do that at some point, but from Frontier's point of view, I get it. It's it's not the most exciting patch to do teasers and trailers for, and, and it probably doesn't sell that many game copies. Um, but I think it would really benefit the existing community. Another thing that's been beginning to, uh, be, to be talked about, or it's not that much yet, but I expect it's going to be more unless something happens soon, is um, the lack of focused feedbacks. Um, a while back, I think a month or two back, they said they were going to do several focus feedbacks. I think four focus feedback was planned for the Q4 update. So not this one launching um, tomorrow, but uh, the next one. And one for squadrons, one for mining, which we've had. 
and they were supposed to come about like with a few weeks uh, interval, maybe sometimes up to a month, but it's nothing has just happened for a very long time and we're still missing the focus feedbacks about the fleet carriers, I think, and the exploration. Those two, nothing. I think they were asked during a live stream what was going on and said, oh, well, they, there will be something about that later. But the, there were people then saying as well, if, if the focus feedbacks are coming out so late, I mean, we are already um, probably going to be, maybe not in Q4, but at least very close to actually being in Q4, when the focus feedbacks for these things comes out. Is it really focused feedback or is it even feedback at all? Is it more like a, this is how we're going to do it, live with it kind of announcement. Um, and maybe they can do some last minute changes, but because they're coming out so late and so close to the launch of the patch, uh, I, the argument that people are making is that then there will be no time for them to actually make a change or make a larger change in case there's something they've gone like completely wrong with something and the community is just not happy with it. So I really hope that those focus feedbacks is gonna come very, very soon. Um, because otherwise we are gonna get a little bit, well, what's the point really, if you're just gonna put them out very close to launch, you don't have time to actually implement any of the feedback that you get. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I'll, I'm definitely gonna keep my eye on the, uh, the focus feedback forums and the announcements to see when, uh, when that is coming out. And of course, because of the launch um, tomorrow, I will be um, I will be live streaming it. And I'm probably going to start at my usual time spot at nine o'clock. There's a chance that I might start earlier. If I do, I will continue like to uh, um, what's it nine o'clock? Nine o'clock my time is seven o'clock in-game time. I'll continue until the the usual uh, time slot at uh, at nine o'clock in-game time. Um, but there's a chance I'll start earlier if the patch drops early and if real life allows it, I'll, I'll definitely try to be streaming it. But that's all tomorrow. Um, there's also some other streams coming up um, either late, either like now or later today. Uh, that depends on when you're watching this, obviously. Okay, I'll come back to that uh, at the end because that, uh, that, that requires a little bit of explanation, I think. But... I want to move on and talk about some of the real life space news and one thing that caught my attention this week was that NASA has approved what's called load and go fueling for the SpaceX manned crew flights. So to get you up to speed, SpaceX is of course working on manned crew flights. Crew flights. <laughs> the only thing they're doing right now with their Dragon module is just hauling cargo up to the space station, like food, supplies, that kind of stuff. But of course, they want to uh, to get approval by NASA to actually do um, manned flights. And normally, you would never use what the the, uh, the load and go fueling tactic because what it is normally okay. So normally, what's been been used by NASA for the last fifty years and which has been a a safety th um, um, thing is you would always fuel the rocket before you load um, the astronauts because there is a little bit of a danger around refueling a rocket. Um, if a valve is not closed or something is, is not holding up as it should, as uh, as you're loading in the, uh, the oxidizer, which is the last thing they will fuel, whether the whole rocket is gonna explode on the pad. So, and, and it, it's happened before, even to the Falcon 9 rockets back in, I think it was in December 6, 16, I believe. They had one of their Falcon 9 rockets completely detonate on the pad doing um, the fueling process. And that's because that, at that space, they have always used the load and go tactic. Um, so it is a bit of a safety concern, but it has now been approved by NASA that they can uh, can use this. Um, and the reason why the SpaceX is using this method is because they're using super cooled uh, fuel. So their fuel is cooled down um, to very low temperatures. Um, and they're doing that to make the fuel more dense, both because then they can carry more fuel in a smaller rocket, but also because when it's then fed into the engine, they can um, they can have a more uh, energy-rich fuel, so they will get more power out of the rocket. And that's absolutely necessary for the Falcon 9 rockets to uh, be able to uh, to lift um, the amount of uh, of cargo that it needs to do. So, so that's one of the reasons why, why uh, that is the reason I believe why uh, SpaceX is, is using that. Um, load and go but of course there is a, a, a there's a bit of risk involved with that but it doesn't mean that SpaceX is going to begin flying manned flights uh, anytime soon they have a lot of testing before they can do that um, 
And the main thing they're going to test is the last system, or not just last actually, which is for is it launch abort systems. I think it's it's, it's the average, average it's it's short for. Um, but the launch abort system is some is you would often see it on older rockets. Um, we would see it as a big tower on top of the actual command module, so the crew capsules. You would see this tower, um, and and what what they would do is you would have access to an emergency uh, um, like an emergency escape button both inside the uh, the cockpit, but also from the command center. If that button is pressed, the capsule will dislodge itself from the top of the rocket. The, there will then in this tower at the top be small rockets that will fire down along the side of the um, of the uh, probe or that the probe the um, the capsule, um, very very quickly lifting it away. It's basically a, a, a like a, a catapult seat. Um, just instead of for a single person, it's for a whole capsule. You're just going to pull that away from the rocket in case something goes wrong and the rocket begins to turn in from being a space vehicle into a very big bomb, um, which is something you really don't want to be close to when that thing goes off. Um, and of course, um, SpaceX have to test their own um, launch escape systems. Their approach has been to put the rockets on the underside of the capsule. Um, that means they have to carry them with them. The reason why you would normally put them at the tower at the top, because then you can then jettison it when you don't need it, and then there's less weight. Um, but they have decided to build it into the capsule, so it's actually part of, um, of the capsule's own um, like, uh, structure. Um, and they'll have to test this in several different configurations, both what happens if you're going to do an abort from a standstill from at the ground. But the more interesting one is what's going to happen if you do this doing Max-Q. Um, Max-Q is the doing a rocket launch when the rocket is under the maximum uh, dynamic stress. So that is the point in the flight where the rocket is being uh, rattled and trying to be pulled apart by all the forces um, the most. It often happens about two minutes into uh, to the flight, and if you see some of the SpaceX launches, they often have a timeline at the bottom, and they will actually mark uh, max Q. The reason why they do that is because it's generally, if you make it past max Q, you have a pretty good chance of um, of not exploding. So they will have to also make sure that their um, escape system works doing um, max Q, of course, when the rocket is under maximum dynamic pressure and stress. So, so yeah. Interesting stuff coming up from uh, from SpaceX, um, and they're now one step closer to, uh, to doing manned flights. So instead, I wanted to talk about live streams, and um, as also already mentioned, of course, Tuesday seven o'clock in game time, um, that will be the, the, the my you know, usual spot. I'll be streaming, and it's called streaming late dangerous. We will be looking at the new patch, assuming it's out by then. Um, if not, we're probably going to find find something else to do while we wait, and then hope the patch going to come out during the stream. Um, but I am planning to stream even before that. Now, of course, this video goes out on Monday. It's recorded on Sunday. There's a because the reason why I mentioned this, I want to, to do a, pan, or a a stream where I um, I have a few preparations I want to do, and I thought that could be interesting for for you to watch as well. Some of the things that I want to to get done before. Um, before the patch actually uh, goes live. And I want to stream that, whether I'm not exactly 100% sure when I'm going to stream it. I might already have streamed it, if it was on Sunday. Uh, in that case, um, you can go and find the video on demand version of it if you want to see the stream. Um, but there's also a chance it's going to be streamed on Monday, which will then, of course, be the day this video is released. So, um, so go over either on Discord to have a look or just drop by my channel and see if I'm live. Um, but yeah, that's going to come. Either Sunday, Monday, I don't know yet. But anyway, I'm gonna call it for today. I really hope that uh, you liked it, today's video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.